Hello, YouTubers, NFL fans everywhere. This is Matt, the NFL fanatic, giving you my conference championship weekend predictions for the 2021-2022 NFL season. Well, for the fanatic this past week, I uh, went 500 against the spread and 500 straight up in the postseason games. Uh, two and two, respectively. Lost both games Saturday against the spread and straight up. Won both games Sunday against the spread and straight up. So now, overall for the postseason, I am now five and five against the spread, 500 even. And straight up now, I am seven and three for the season, which equals 70 percent. And now, overall for the year against the spread and straight up, I am 131, 145 and six against the spread, which equals 47 and a half percent. And straight up now, I am 182, 99 and one, which equals 64.7 percent straight up. So definitely right around where my averages are for the season. Definitely straight up about 65 percent. I'm okay with that against the spread. Um, it was a little bit of a disappointing year at 47.5%, but hopefully next year, you know, now my fourth year, I hope I can, you know, get these against the spread picks right. I hope I can try to manage the games better, but we shall see. Um, so I'm just going to go directly into my predictions. There we go. So this Sunday, January 30th, three games to go. The AFC Championship game is first. When the number four seeded Cincinnati Bengals travel to Kansas City, take on the number two seeded Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs are seven point favorites in this game. I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs here to win straight up, but I'm going to take the Cincinnati Bengals plus seven. And then in the night game for the NFC Championship game, when the number six seeded San Francisco 49ers travel to Los Angeles to take on the number four seeded LA Rams. The Los Angeles Rams are three and a half point favorites in that game. I am going to take the upset here. I am going to take the San Francisco 49ers here to plus three and a half and the San Francisco 49ers straight up. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, I'm my Super Bowl 56 prediction is a rematch from Super Bowl 54. Just for the second time in three years, I have the Kansas City Chiefs going or playing the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 56 from SoFi Stadium. All right, so time for my thoughts on each game. The Kansas City Chiefs over the Cincinnati Bengals. This game, look, both divisional weekend was fantastic by far. Um, four games decided by 15 points. Uh, Bengals Titans, three, the first three games decided by the road kicker, Evan McPherson, 52 yards, Robbie Gold, 45, Matt Gay, 30, and uh, Patrick Mahomes getting the overtime touchdown. To win the fourth one what a you know what a great weekend but i'm going to take the uh kansas city chiefs here over the cincinnati Bengals, based on the fact that after what josh allen did i cannot see joe burrow copying that performance <clears throat> joe burrow has the talent to do it he has jamar chase who the last time they played in week 17 when the Bengals won off a field goal uh, he had 266 yards and three touchdowns he has T. Higgins. He has Tyler Boyd. He has C.J. Uzama. He has Joe Mixon. He has advantages at the skill position in terms of depth and talent at the running back position. And an okay tight end. <clears throat> but the Bengals' Achilles heel is their offensive line. The Titans got nine sacks on Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow still won the game. The tight end NFL record. I think they said the last person who did that was McNabb back in 2000 or 2001. When he had a nine sack, when he got sacked nine times and won the game for the Eagles against the Packers. I just feel like this Chiefs defensive line will get a lot of pressure on Joe Burrow. And I don't think that you will be able to get field goals and accept field goals in that in this kind of game with the expectation from Mahomes. Mahomes has been outstanding. He has 23 touchdowns and one interception in his eight home playoff games. His only home loss was the overtime loss in 2018 to the New England Patriots. And I just feel like, again, the Chiefs, they have the confidence here. They have the home field advantage. Fourth consecutive championship, conference championship game hosted by the Chiefs that sets an NFL record. It's the first team since Andy Reid back in 2000 with the Eagles that held four consecutive AFC championship games from 2001, I believe, to 2004. So, you know, Andy knows the spot. Andy knows what this team has. And I feel like for the Bengals, they played really well. 
They've been one of the most amazing stories. They're one of the hotter teams that going forward, they have a very good core, $55 million in cap space to work with. But at the end of the day, I just think the Chiefs, with their firepower, with their offense, and a better defensive line push against the Bengals' offensive line, I think Joe Burrows is going to be a little bit too under pressure, and Mahomes with his legs and his arm would be able to make a few more plays to right the wrong from Week 17 and send the Chiefs to their third consecutive Super Bowl, the first team since the Patriots from a few years ago, from 2016 to 2018 to make three straight Super Bowls, which is pretty amazing that in about a five-year stretch you have two teams make the Super Bowl six times combined over that uh, five uh, that, that five-year stretch. Actually, yeah, actually two teams, two teams over six years, consecutive Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. That's that's amazing to me. Ah. I think the Bengals have a chance. I think the Bengals, you know, I think seven points is way too many. I think the Bengals have enough offensive firepower. They have a good enough pass rush and defense. Their secondary with Mike Hilton, with uh, Jesse Bates. They have a talented enough defense to maybe get a few stops. And I, I, I do think the Bengals have enough athleticism with Lou Amarando coaching. that I, I think he can play a good enough game. But I, I just think, again, the Chiefs have too much experience. The better quarterback, and I just think that the offensive line is going to bite them at this point to where I don't think Mahomes turns it over nearly as often as Tannehill did with his three interceptions in order for the Chiefs to win. Should be a fantastic game. I am rooting for the Bengals, maybe a little bit personally, because I feel like it's a cool story. The Chiefs are, you know, trying to go there. But also, it's kind of in a way for the Chiefs. Like, this shows that they are going to be, with the Bucks losing yesterday, they could be the new standard bearer for the NFL moving forward and for the longest time. So, that's all I can see. Chiefs are uh, straight up at the Cincinnati Bengals, plus seven. And finally, the San Francisco 49ers over the Los Angeles Rams. I am taking the San Francisco 49ers here based on the fact that I have confidence in this game to where when you have quarterbacks, running backs, like talent-wise, the Rams have the advantage. The Rams played a fantastic game against the Bucks, 27-3 lead. They end up, you know, in the middle of the third quarter, and the they end up blowing that lead by just crazy turnovers. Um, you had Cooper Cup fumble. You had Cam Akers fumble twice. You had Tom Brady throw a great touchdown to Mike Evans. And you had a tie game. But when Todd Bowles set everybody on Matt Stafford on a bomb blitz, apparently Levante David did not hear the call and Devin White didn't hear the call. And Stafford was able to throw a beautiful pass to Cooper Cup, which set up a 30-yard field goal by Matt Gay to win the game. And look, the Rams have the motivation. They've lost six straight times of this team. They just blew a 17-point lead three weeks ago against this team in this building, in their home stadium. But I think that's what I just have the advantage with the Niners. The Niners, I feel like to me, they get better once the pressure molds melts. That I feel like with the Rams, you saw it. As soon as it was a one-score game, and then you saw the fumble, it just felt like the Rams... Knew they were gagging, and if it wasn't for, you know, a blown blitz. The Rams could have very well lost a 24-point lead and given Tom Brady his second greatest comeback in his NFL career. The Niners, on the other hand, they were gritty. They were tough. They were the first team since the 1988 Buffalo Bills to have a blocked field goal and a blocked punt in the same postseason game. Jimmy Garoppolo did not play well at all. He was 11 of 18 for about 120 yards through a horrible red zone interception. And I just feel like for the Niners, like, they have the confidence that they can beat anybody. No Andrew Whitworth, no Trent Williams. Those two guys, both of them playing would be huge. <clears throat> both not would be a concern. But I, I think if, it, if they both don't play, that cancels out. I, I think the Niners' pass rush is a little bit more polished. And I, I just feel like, again, Kyle Shanahan has the perfect system to run against McVay. He has a lot of creative runs, especially those inside tosses. Debo Sam was going to have a field day for another big game where he could throw, run, or pass. Who knows? And I just have to trust the coaching here. That's what it comes down to. The talent says Rams should win. Rams should get the monkey off their back and get to their first Super Bowl since, or their second Super Bowl since 2018. I just think for the Niners, they have the better coaching staff. They have the better confidence and that Jimmy can play better. Stafford, you know, we know Stafford, you know, can play well. Jimmy, we know Jim, they they know Jimmy can play better, and if they have to, you bring in Trey Lance to you know spice up the offense if it has to. 
But <clears throat> at the end of the day, when you win six straight times against an opponent, and the other time was a set, the last time was a seventeen point comeback. There's no way I can't pick you. You know, could the Rams win? Sure. And I, you know, again, I wouldn't be surprised. But the Niners just have the momentum. They have the physical toughness. They have the better coaching staff. And I just think the Niners just understand in these big spots how to win. And the key thing is get Sean McVay down. If he has a lead at halftime, he's only lost one time, and he's like 46 and one. If they are down at the half, Sean McVay wins just about a little over 50 percent of the time. And he hasn't been, I don't think he's been Shanahan in any of those spots either as well. So, that's why I have the 49ers <coughs> winning this game. Should be a fantastic game. That's why I have the San Francisco 49ers plus three and a half and San Francisco 49ers straight up. Um, before I go, I just want to give a quick few thoughts on Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Um, Aaron Rodgers, I think, is gonna, not going to be with the Packers next year. I don't think he will continue to play. I would look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Denver Broncos, the Raiders, the Titans, all those teams to try to ask to try to get his services. But I feel like for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, he is the modern day pain man. He has all these great numbers. Multiple time MVP, one of the most efficient, consistent quarterbacks we've ever seen. First ballot Hall of Fame. No doubt about it. No question. However, Aaron's problem is this. He's going to be arguably a top 10 to top 15 quarterback. Because I'm, I'm, I might, I'm going to say a hot take here. Ben Roethlisberger, who's about to retire himself, big Ben Roethlisberger is a better overall quarterback than Aaron Rodgers. There I said it. Big Ben's won more titles. Big Ben's been the more Super Bowls. Big Ben has better overall yardage numbers. I get pure play. I get that. But Big Ben was a much more effective quarterback than Rodgers. He was. Like, with the winning. Like, that's what it matters to me. I get the stats. I know they're pretty and they're all great. But Big Ben did more. And you can say, look, he had a few more years, sure. But that's what you have to go with. You know, like, you know, people can say, well, Aaron and Breeze. That's, that's a more debatable thing, but I'd take Aaron. Just a bit slightly, just with his numbers. But he's not Peyton Manning. He's not John Elway. He's not Brady. He's not Montana. He's not even Patrick Mahomes for an hour. I'd take Patrick Mahomes right now. After five years. Then I'd take Aaron Rodgers' career right now. Aaron Rodgers is the modern day Peyton Manning. Or Aaron Rodgers is Peyton Manning. Just less charismatic and a little bit more efficient. That's what he is. Phenomenal regular season numbers. Multiple time MVP. Multiple time Pro Bowler. One of the best pure throwers we've ever seen. If not the best. But the postseason failing has to keep showing up over and over and over again. He threw 20 of 21 of his passes to Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. And if you really look at it, Devontae Adams had basically all his yardage on that 175-yard wheel route. That was a broken play. Everything else before that was 40 yards, and Devontae got 90. And then nobody else really effectively moved the game. And if you were the Niners, that would, that would be fantastic. Devontae Adams has 90 yards, nobody else has anything else. You will live with that. <clears throat> and the worst part was on that last play, he had Rodgers wide open. Lazard, or he had Alan Lazard wide open in the middle of the field. And he went to Devontae in double coverage. Just like he did last year. So, there was that. And for Tom Brady, <clears throat> what a you know what a way to come, you know, go out in this final game. He had a rough game. He got, of course, his first on sports like conduct penalty, which was shocking. I thought that, you know, he played well enough at the end. He had a great touchdown pass to Mike Evans. Uh, the crazy turnovers. But that's like that was the difference between Brady and Rodgers. Brady at the end did everything he could. Rodgers at the end felt like he couldn't do anything. And yeah, I know you could argue the special teams. Block punt, block field goal. And they had 10 men on the field on the last field goal attempt by Robbie Gold. I just look at the Brady situation. Saying, I believe Tom Brady will come back for his 23rd season. 23rd and the final season. Because I just believe that he does not want to end his career on that note. He does not want to end his career losing to the Rams very much kind of in an opposite way in how his career started or how the legend of Tom Brady started. I think he wants one more shot. I think if they can get Chris Godwin back and they can re-sign a lot of those guys, if he can move some money around, I think the Bucks can give him one more run to get a not, to get an A-ring for Brady and then he can end his career at 45 just like he wanted to. 
<clears throat> on top. But if he retires, look, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He has nothing left to prove. He proved everything last year, and it was a tremendous career for Tom Brady that, honestly, I don't think we will ever see again. Led the league in passing, led the league in completions, broke every yardage record, has every NFL record known to man for a quarterback, and will go down as the greatest overall player in NFL history, the 199th pick from the 2000 draft from Michigan. But for the Bucks, though, I will, I will have to say this, like I said, uh, if you look at the NFC, the AFC, I, I will tell you this right now, over the next 15 to 20 years, the AFC will win, I believe, 13 to 14 of the Super Bowls or 18 to 19 of the next Super Bowls. Because the quarterback gap in the AFC to the NFC is ridiculous. So I think if Brady leaves and Rodgers retire, or Brady and Rodgers both retire, or Rodgers leaves the conference, the NFC is wide open with Russell Wilson taking the best quarterback position but not having nearly a good enough team. Then you look at Stafford, Dak, Kyler, or Stafford, Dak, Jimmy, and Kyler as your new four main guys with Trey Lance being that new phenom for the Niners that they move on from. That could be the next big-time quarterback the NFC needs that can move the Niners into that top conversation. So, all right, so that is it. So good luck to all players, coaches, teams, fellow prognosticators, uh, any fantasy players, any daily fantasy players. You know, look, you, you have to pick your best line out of the teams. We'll have to wait and see. But, and good luck to everybody out there um, picking as well. And until next week, I don't know if I'm going to do my Super Bowl prediction video next Monday or Tuesday, but I will do a Super Bowl prediction video on uh, next week sometime, either Monday or Tuesday. But until then, this is uh, good luck to all players, teams, coaches, fantasy football players, and fellow prognosticators. Check out the NFL YouTube prognosticators page. See Half Moon's picks, Bridgewater's finest, Andrew Warren, uh, Big Pat's sports talking, um, <coughs> sports fan entertainment. Check out all those guys and gals that uh, make predictions just like I do every single week during the post or during the NFL season. And until my Super Bowl 56 prediction video, this is Matt the NFL, Matt the NFL Fanatic signing off. Until next time, so long.